Gordon Brown's on holiday, Peter Manderson's covering for him, but I just thought it'd be quite nice to ask a whole lot of different people today. You are in charge for one hour uh, in number 10, what could you bring in? And once you're in, it can't be changed. Our friend Jonathan Davis, a uh, financial advisor from armstrongdavis.com. Jonathan, good morning to you, my friend. Hello, Ronnie. I've sat you behind a good accent to be Prime Minister, by the way, John. <laughs> <laughs> I've got you in the Cabinet Office and your hour starting, Jonathan. What are you going to do for us? Um, I did first think that I might put a comedian into the cabinet, but then I thought there's no point because there's 20 of them already. Aye, aye. Um, and then I thought more seriously that you know how the Daily Telegraph told us all about MPs' expenses? Well, we wouldn't have got that unless we'd had originally the Freedom of Information Act. So I would want to strengthen freedom of information. I think one of the reasons, clearly I'm in finance, one of the reasons why we're in the economic mire that we're in is because we didn't have enough open data as to what was happening. So if there was a strengthened freedom of information, then I think we would know better what's going on and then we can take prior action. I think you'd get a lot of people behind that one, Jonathan. Seriously, I think people are, are, are really you know, fed up with kind of you know, the information that's allowed to be in the public domain. I think, I think you get votes for that one. There's, there's a, an example going on right now. I mean, it's nothing to do with finance. It's the defence side of things. Uh, the, there's apparently a, a report which says that our defence buying, our defence procurement, is inefficient but um, surprise surprise um, number 10 hasn't allowed it to be uh, disclosed well very interesting I think all right and what else would you do Jonathan well um, again on the finance side of things I've got to talk about finance because that's what I do um, again another one of the reasons why we got into the economic mire we're in and and I might say until the next election in May next year I don't think the man and woman on the street is really going to know how bad a situation we're in because at that point we're going to see very big tax rises and very big cuts in public spending but that's for next year in order to hopefully avoid future problems we need to stop reckless bank lending the two things I would want the banks to do is, one, we need to split retail banking, which is loans to households and businesses, from investment banking, which is trading by the banks on stocks and shares. The investment bankers can do whatever they want, and if they make huge profits, they can keep them. And if they make huge losses, well, we ain't going to bail them out because that's keep them their as well. risk. <laughs> they can keep them as well. That's exactly. A, I like that one, Jonathan. And the retail side of things, we'd have to limit the amount that they can lend based on their initial base of capital. So they've been lending 20, 30, 40 times their capital. I'd want to limit that to 10 times the capital. So split retail from trading. Prime Minister Davis, thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome, my subject. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Jonathan Davis from armstrongdavis.com. What would you do with your hour in charge?